I feel Monkey Kid is one of the most underrated LEGO themes right now, but the City of Lantern set will absolutely catch a lot of people's attention. I get a lot of Ninjago City vibes when looking at this, given that the set is made out of different buildings, the different bright colors used, the accesses and stairs all over the place, and the Asian details like the lanterns or the letterings on the stickers, which by the way we unfortunately get a lot of. Just like Ninjago City sets. <laughs> what stands out the most straight away are the roller coaster railings in the teal color, which are used for the peak train. It's a fun and compact design that only carries three passengers but fits the scale of the overall model quite well. Access to the train is done via these stairs over here, and the sign is a cool reference to the monorail Lego set from a couple decades ago. The train course circles around the whole model, having another stop on the opposite side where passengers can take off to access the upper levels of the City of Lanterns. The back portion of the travel isn't as interesting but I quite like that a longer track element was provided so that you can use this set or multiple copies of it to build a larger train track with the three different types of tracks included. Still in the back there are some cleaning tools on this corner here and over on this side you can rent a scooter. Back to the front there's a small karaoke booth and even though there's two microphones inside it's really hard to access this part of the build. As are these buildings in the middle of the city which minifigs can go into via these stairs next to an octant tank. The LEGO World gas brand. Another cool easter egg. Nothing to fear though as these buildings were made to be taken out of the core of the city like so for easier play. In fact the top buildings can also be removed and all of them have pinholes so you can connect them together. Technic pins are provided for these and are stored under here which at the beginning of the build without any context I found really weird for not understanding the reason a bunch of Technic pins were just loose over here. The first of the builds is the bar where some beverages can be purchased. The round tiles inside of the 1x2x5 clear brick Technic is nicely used here and the drink themselves are clever builds. The back of the building has nothing to talk about though there's a lost crate under these stairs. The noodle shop is for me the coolest looking out of all the buildings of the set. It uses a bunch of stickers for the decorations but the brick built details compensate for that. The roofs with the dark green ingot elements are a nice touch, the brick built monkey head is fun but my favorite has to be the yin and yang sign made to look like two different noodle flavors perhaps. In the ground floor there's a shop with some interesting items for sale and over here there seems to have a dumpling making place. On the top floor we find the actual restaurant where three people can sit, there's a bunch of seasonings and bottles you can use but the highlight of this area here has to be a brand new element, the chopsticks. This is a very interesting piece that minifix can hold on one hand and looks really good for Asian restaurant related builds. Speaking of restaurants there's also a lobster place with an oversized sign and yet another easter egg in the form of this sticker with the word snap, a very weird lego theme from the 90s. The next building is a small grocery store called the panda store with matching brick built sign, a cool tree on the top and a few items for sale inside. The Lotus Hotel looks very nice from the outside with this dark red shape around the entrance door cleverly made with this fairly new Lego slope. On the top there are six of these new bay windows in the sand blue color and at the top the Lotus Flower with this weird build that must have some sort of significance to the animated Monkey Kid show. On the back the bottom floor is rather simple and the first floor of the hotel features a lamp and a bed. My favorite building however has to be the Lego shop. I think it's brilliant that they added one here and I would love to see if it also ends up making the show. The story is complete with the classic green dragon making great use of the shield element in green with stickers for the scales and two upscaled lego pieces. Inside there's a pick a brick wall and shelves with some very cool lego sets for sale. There's poolside paradise, black seas barracuda, the space cruiser, one I can't pinpoint let me know in the comments if you know it, the monkey king warrior mech, spring lantern festival, the temple of anubis and finally the Hello castle. I'm pretty sure a ton of lego fans would die to be able to see a shelf like this. When placed next to another in the way you most see fit, the street created looks really nice and you can clearly see all the buildings as opposed to when they are built in the city core. It loses the Ninjago city feel but wins on accessibility and playability. The core itself without all the extras looks less impressive but it was an interesting build and it is surprisingly sturdy. Now something that has me wondering is the way this is built. There's connection points everywhere and it can easily be taken apart, almost too easy. So I'm ready to bet that, like Ninjago city and Ninjago city docks and gardens, this set might have expansions in upcoming Monkey Kid releases if the theme doesn't die out as it is approaching the usual two year time frame homegrown lego themes usually last. In this sign over here the mooncakes are mentioned which is a direct reference to another set of the team, Chenji Mooncake Factory and there's another sticker up here by the electrical post that I'm sure has to mean something as no stickers in the set contain purely random information. There's a lot of easter eggs that I didn't cover or I was not aware of its significance so it can also be a fun hunt to try and guess all of the meanings when building the model. The set comes 
with 7 minifigures and I'll quickly cover Pixie's flying machine, which is, well, something, I guess. Pixie himself has a massive backpack add-on with kitchen utilities that he might use to fight or cook while traveling. His chef's torso looks really cool despite the print itself showing it all dirty and messy. Next we have Wang, a civilian from the City of Lanterns, featuring a nice torso I haven't seen before. Mr. Tang has a cool-looking torso and features a double-sided head, but one thing I noticed are the red glasses that should actually be black when looking closer at press release images and even the box images. So I guess I got myself a misprinted element. Mei is my favorite minifigure of the set with an awesome torso print with a jacket and purse inside and on the back features a dragon and horses, maybe a reference to one of her vehicles, the white dragon horse jet. The head piece is also really cool and the face is also double printed. The train driver looks like a very common minifigure, then there's Han, another civilian from the City of Lanterns, with a cool looking torso, double sided head print and a Lego store bag. Finally, Monkey Kid himself with a map and a compass, clearly looking for those fury rings we saw at the top of the Lotus Hotel, and he is equipped with his magical staff in the back. He has the most detailed prints with a double sided head print, and the only minifigure of the set with printed legs. There's also two city bots, but I don't really count these as minifigures. This set really is a Ninjago city on a budget, but that isn't necessarily a bad thing. The building experience was fine, except for the first few bags where not a whole lot of interesting building happens as we're just doing structural builds for the train and the city itself. But when you get to the buildings and different shops, it becomes quite enjoyable to uncover all of the details, easter eggs and building techniques. The major downside of the set, in my opinion, is the amount of stickers. While providing very important and nice detailing, they do make you stop the building flow a lot of times. At the recommended retail prices, the set is also an amazing LEGO deal when it comes down to the price per piece ratio. So if you missed out on Ninjago City sets while not being the same, the City of Lanterns is the closest you can get for a fraction of the price. Like I said in the beginning, Monkey Kid feels like a very underrated theme and this set is one of the reasons. But there's also Nezra's Fire Ring, like seriously, how cool is this thing? Then there's May's Dragon Car with a brand new LEGO color, and better yet, a Rabbit Mooncake Factory complete with a Mecha Bunny and Carrot Rocket. Like, wow! Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss those reviews and I'll see you on the next one.